I think that our credibility um, with allies and partners around the world and with adversaries uh, is being intensely reviewed by them to see which way this is going to go. Um, and I think that damage is one word that could be used, yes. Damage? Yeah, I would say so. And more damage today. Uh, Martha McCallum here. Martha, you've been watching, covering. I think you were you had your show. Did you have your whole show yesterday? Did you get uh, your whole we, one in? Almost the whole show, yeah. Almost the whole yeah. show. So uh, when you're watching this, your takeaway now as Mackenzie and Millie and Austin are navigating these questions. You know, it's... Where to begin? I mean, it's so disconcerting to listen to these answers and not recognize, you know, that there, I just, I go back to, remember how many times people kept track of the lies that President Trump oh, did, nonstop. Right? You know, it was like this morning, it was almost like a running thing at the bottom of the screen, 865 lies, right? Um, and, and now you have this situation where the president says almost nothing, right? I mean, he's, he has, uh, we're listening to what his top military brass told him. He said that he did not remember, which is also disconcerting, them advising him to leave 2,500 troops. But we all know what happened. I mean, he wanted out and there was no way that he was going to do this any other way. And so he rebuffed all of the people in the room, which we now know. I don't understand what they're talking about with this split. It's not clear to me who was on the other side of this split other than the president. But the president assured us that the Taliban would not take over, that the Afghan army would hold after 20 years of training, that Al-Qaeda was finished, that they were done, that they were done. That he didn't recall that advice, that it was an extraordinary success, and he also promised, and when they were just talking about this moments ago as you and I were listening, if if you want to leave, we will get you out. Promise. That was a promise. We will get you out. That you was were, the answer now. Did that you hear, was the answer. Did you hear Senator Tom Tillis yesterday talking about people that they were trying to get out? Yeah. They were sent a video of, of their throats being slashed? No, I didn't see that. Unbelievable. So it's, it's unbelievable. And what did Secretary of Defense Austin just say? So he was just asked by Seth Moulton, yeah. who served in the war, who was I thought did a brave, very brave thing to see for himself what was happening at the airport. I had no problem with him doing that at the time when it was its worst in Kabul airport. Yeah. People were critical of him. Are you kidding? No, I thought your he take was, on that was very interesting and, and so, correct. So Seth Moulton, he's a Democrat, and he ran for president and would won terribly, but he definitely knows what he's talking about. And he mm-hmm. just said, Secretary of State Austin, Secretary Austin, are you going to get our people out? He goes, as many as I can. As many as I can. I mean, are you kidding? Number one, how could you leave them? And that's still your answer three weeks later? And he's got nobody right now on this specifically. Hands over to the state when the questions get tough. And you just heard as we went to break an example of 45 people or 75 people on a plane who can't get a base to land on. We're flying around with little kids on the plane and they're told they can't land. I, I've been highlighting that phrase and I call it the operative phrase, as many as we can. They've been saying that since August 24th. So this is nothing new, what we just heard from General Austin. They have never set the bar at every single person, despite the fact that the president said, we will get, we will bring you home, we will get you out. Those are direct quotes from the president of the United States. But the phrase from Blinken and from defense and state has always been, as many as we can, and from the White House podium as well. So that's a pretty, you could drive a truck through as many as we can. Right, and, and by the way, as Secretary of Defense and a former general, how do you even get those words out of your mouth? Uh, right. have, as many as we can. When you are training people, you came up, you know what these these men and women look like, you know what they've sacrificed, you've seen the bodies, you zipped up the body bags, and now you're saying as many as we can, and you even know the enemy? You watch the enemy, Al-Qaeda in Iraq, and now you see ISIS, and you see Al-Qaeda, and you see the Taliban back in Afghanistan. Dan Sullivan said something interesting uh, to me last night. His takeaway was he's still a military officer in the reserves. Cut 22. The president said that our, his generals recommended that there should be no forces in Afghanistan. That was not true. The president said that Al Qaeda was gone from Afghanistan. That was not true. The president said that um, our military would stay until all Americans were out of the country. That was not true. And Brian, this is the big one. The president continues to say this fiasco was, quote, an extraordinary success. I asked General Milley that. General Milley, in the hearing today, called it a strategic failure. So look, these lies, these are not some kind of minor misstatements. These were huge fabrications at the heart of this foreign policy fiasco, life and death deceptions that we finally were confirming in the hearing today. So, I mean, this is, it was unbelievable because 
Number one, Martha, are you surprised that they were so transparent about their recommendation as opposed to the president's statements? They were fully aware of what the president said to George Stephanopoulos. So were you surprised that they were had no problem not making the president look absolutely awful and like the liar that Dan Sullivan— I don't think they have, I don't think they have any choice. Because they're under oath. They're under oath. They know what the conversations were. I mean, Jennifer Griffin and Lucas Tomlinson were reporting that these conversations. Do you remember Lucas Tomlinson in the in the press briefing in the middle of the heat of all of this, you know, going back and saying, you, you know, did did they ask to leave 2,500 troops on the ground? Did they ask? Did they ask? And, you know, having a tough time getting anywhere with it. But they, they that's what I thought. We were going to see and, Admiral Kirby. And you know what? Also, they're, they're going to, you know. I mean, we've already seen the number of books that General Milley has been involved in, and maybe his, there's another book coming, uh, and he wants to be, you know, on the record. And as you, they're under oath. Uh, they have to tell the truth. They tried as hard as they could to put the president in the most decent light possible. But every time they talk about it, they say, well, the president decided we were leaving on August 31st. And every other decision flowed from that and gave us 600 troops to do it. So every other decision flowed from that. Because I can't hold pogrom. I can't hold pogrom with 600. Or the embassy or anything else with 600. Just for the record, he uh, he cooperated with Bob Woodward, Michael Bender, and Phil Rucker for those three anti-Trump books, but could not reveal what went on with the president of the United yeah. States confidential conversations. As Rick Scott pointed out, I foolishly was not able to put this together. He did. How can you cooperate with these journalists, but not cooperate with us when we ask you yeah. about those conversations, which is cooperating with the American people. The other big story, and we're going to have his parents on tonight at 7 uh, on, on primetime, is Lieutenant Colonel Stuart Scheller, who said this, cut 33 on Facebook. And I'm not saying we've got to be in, the, in Afghanistan forever, but I am saying, did any of you throw your rank on the table and say, hey, it's a bad idea to evacuate Bagram Airfield, the strategic air barriers, before we evacuate everyone? I have been fighting for 17 years. I am willing to throw it all away to say to my senior leaders, I demand accountability. And he did. And he did it again. They told him to shut up. He didn't. So they put him in jail. Yeah. He's in jail right now he, for telling the truth and making himself old, accountable. He, look who's accountable, right? He's the only person. This, this is extraordinary. I love the two examples that you just put together because they really point to the incredible hypocrisy that we are seeing play out. Honor is so important, right? And we're hearing from General Milley that he, you know, because of honor, he won't disclose his conversations with presidents. I also thought Marsha Blackburn did a great job at nailing this down yesterday. She basically said, and I'm paraphrasing here, you know, General Milley, you talked to three authors about a sitting president while you were chairman of the Joint Chiefs to make yourself look good and him look bad. I mean, I, you know, I don't know how you get around that. Um, I, I think that's pretty much what happened. He's a and politician. now you won't disclose anything that you urged this president to do. Um, who was hell bent on withdrawal and you, you don't want to disclose your conversations with him. And yes. And I look forward to you talking to these parents tonight. I think this is a great booking. Um, Lieutenant Colonel Stuart Scheller wanted to hold these people accountable and he is the only person who's been held accountable. He's in the brig. He is in, he is in the brig and guess what? Solitary confinement. So they don't want him talking. So they did this a Colonel, psychological test of him early on. They asked him to have a psychological yeah. evaluation after he did that first video. And he's like, you know, I went in there. They gave me all the questions. I did the evaluation. They said I was fine. Of course he's fine. He <laughs> made total sense. And he said, I got on, someone got on LinkedIn and said to me, you know, if you're that upset, resign. And he said, I thought about it. I'm going to resign. So I'm done. Don't court martial him for yeah. what? You court martial him for that. Now, technically, the president of the United States made a series of decisions you're making the president look pretty bad by telling him your decision behind closed doors. So why is it okay for Scheller to speak? And it's you know, and it's and it's it's okay. And Millie says it's fine for him to speak to these authors, but it's not okay for Scheller to speak to YouTube. Oh, it's ridiculous. I mean, it's unbelievable. And this guy put his money where his mouth is. This guy was actually fighting and training people. And you would think these are the type of people you want to speak up. Now, I understand in the chain of command, there's got to be some type of uh, there's got to be some type of discipline. I understand that. But looking at everything you just compared it to, this one, they'd be better off not bringing this up. Now, right now, Schiller is having it worse because he's in solitary confinement. But I cannot tell you, uh, after doing this yesterday, Michael Waltz uh, sent it to me at 3 in the morning. And then Tom Cotton brought it up in the afternoon. And then by the time we covered it, and then Laura Ingram had the parents on last night, everyone's writing, what can I do? What can I do? This is what people are frustrated. They're going to they're gonna go to, this guy is going to be bigger than life soon. You know, it, it is, because people, 
people have a very good truth meter, right? And they have a good BS meter and it makes absolutely no sense. And I agree with you. There has to be discipline. There has to be a chain of command, but, but that we've seen that blown up. I mean, General Keene yesterday came on and he's been very supportive of General Milley with the China phone call and everything else. But he said he should in no way be talking to these authors while he's the sitting commander in chief of the U S armed forces. And he is serving a U.S. president and talking about him to these writers behind his back. General Keene was ballistic on it. Right. And Here's the thing. When the follow-up question was this, were they accurate in portraying your remarks? I didn't read the book. My, there's no way he didn't read the book. And, that and is totally accurate. if he didn't read the book, my question is like, then why are you talking right. to them? What? If you're going to talk to all these people, don't you want to make sure that you were represented accurately? Yeah. Yeah, here's what Rick Scott told us today. He was incensed. He was in the, he's on the Armed Services Committee and questioned yesterday. Well, but but Milley, General Milley can go out there and talk to reporters about their writing a book about the prior president, and he's got sensitive information, right? So what's we're, there's a double standard here. If 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 they if you're not allowed to talk about what you think about these things, then how can that individual be in prison and General Milley can be sitting there testifying in front of Congress? Little, so such a I mean, great point. Make any sense. Such, right. So here's the thing. They're just now having a questioning right now about how could you leave all this stuff behind? I did not know this. If, if your gun is taken, your officer pays the price if you lose your gun or anything like that, your uniform. We gave all uniforms, all our equipment, all our goggles, all our weapons, all our hardware, all our vehicles. We gave it over. Yeah. Now, you talk about a double standard. If one soldier, one Marine loses one weapon, they're, they're in danger of being fired on the spot. Who's getting fired yeah. for leaving all of our money behind it's, it's a arming point. a terrorist regime? Bill Bennett told a great story about having dinner with his son who was um, serving in uh, on a base in California. And the son, his son called and said, I can't make it to dinner, Dad, because somebody lost a pair of night vision goggles. And we are all hands on deck, so to speak. They're not in the Navy, but they were on the base. Um until they, until we find them, no one can leave the base until we find these night vision goggles. Now they're all over Kabul. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.